The first scripture reading this morning is Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you have come to the land that the Lord, God, Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down to Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians created, treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The second reading is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is any, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them, and the God of peace will be with you. And the third reading is John chapter 6, verses 25 to 35. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures your eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works, the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe it? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May God bless these words to our understanding. The first step. The first step in being thankful is memory. The first step in being thankful is remembering why, what cause we have to be thankful. If we never forget, if we never forget why we have many, many gifts, we will always be thankful. But if we never remember, 
if we never pause to call to mind those reasons we have to be thankful, it's my belief we will never be thankful. The first step in being thankful is memory. And I think that's in part because if we don't pause to remember, if we don't pause to think back, we forget to name things as gifts. If we don't pause to think back and look at how these things have been gifted to us, we have a tendency, perhaps especially in North America, in white settler culture, to think of these things as just well, of course we have them. They're ours by right. I think that's why we have passages like that one from Deuteronomy that Susan just read. And there are multiple passages in Hebrew scriptures which call people to do this exact thing. To remember the story. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, the Lord heard our voice, saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I've never understood why a land flowing with milk and honey is so attractive because it sounds like a rather messy place to live. But anyway. <laughs> People are encouraged to remember what God has done for them so that they would be thankful. And in that passage, it's part of offering the first fruits. It's part of a harvest celebration. All these years later, we continue to remind ourselves of what God has done in our lives. So that we too could be thankful. So that we too could see the broader picture and see how gifted, how blessed we are. And not only do I believe that makes us more thankful, I think it makes us more joyful. We live in a world where there is a multi-billion dollar industry dedicated to the task of convincing us that we need the next best thing. The new iPhone. The new vehicle. The new this, the new that. Multi-billion dollar industry convicted, committed to committing us to saying, well, if we just had that, we would be happy. If I could just get that, I would be happy. God calls us to remember how blessed we already are. And when we remember how blessed we already are, it doesn't make life automatically easier. It doesn't take away the struggles, but it makes us see life differently. If we always look around saying, oh, if only I could get, oh, that would be so nice. Oh, wouldn't that be? It changes how we view life. If we look at life and say, yeah, that would be nice, but I'm good with what I've got. I've got things I can write on a leaf and hang on a tree. It changes us. It makes it easier to do what Paul encourages the church in Philippi to do. And I'm going to read, um, Susan just read from the New Revised Standard updated edition. But this week I got my copy, and there is a copy in the library as well, of the First Nations Version. This is an indigenous translation of the New Testament. And rather than being a word-by-word -word translation, it's more thought-by-thought. 
And this is how they encaptured that word, that, that passage Susan read. Always dance with joy before our honored chief. I will say it again, dance with joy. Let everyone see how kind and thoughtful you are. Our honored chief is close at hand. Do not let your hearts be weighed down with anything. Instead, with every step you take, send your voice to the great spirit, asking him for the things you need. And in all things, remember to give him thanks. Then the peace and harmony of the great spirit, which goes far beyond our small and weak ways of thinking, will watch over your hearts and minds through the the chosen one, creator sets free, Jesus. Last of all, my sacred family members, if anything can be seen as good and honorable, think deeply about those things, things that are true and noble, upright and pure, full of beauty and worthy of respect. Follow the way of life you have seen in me, the things you have learned from me, heard from me, received from me. Keep walking in the traditions I have passed on to you. Then the great spirit of peace will continue to walk with you on this road. Always dance with joy before the honored chief. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. When we remember that we are blessed, when we are thankful for the gifts that surround us, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, so thank the Lord, so thank the Lord for all of his love. How can we help but dance with joy? Make a joyful noise, all the earth. But the first step is to remember. The first step is to remember not only that we've got the things, but that they are gifts and that they are blessings. The first step is to remember. It's Thanksgiving weekend, in case you missed that note. It's Thanksgiving weekend, which is that time when we set aside to give thanks for harvest. If you're in Northwestern Ontario, it traditionally was the weekend that moose season opened. And so you were hoping you were giving thanks for your moose. But as people of faith, Thanksgiving isn't a weekend. Yes, on Thanksgiving weekend, or as I'm trying to encourage us this month of thankfulness, which is why our tree of thanks will be up all month, we encourage each other to stop and remember. But for people of faith, Thanksgiving is a lifelong practice. It's not a weekend. It's not a day. It's not an excuse to overeat. It's a lifelong practice where we always pause to remember what God has done in our lives and dance with joy and make a joyful noise and sing songs of praise and thanksgiving. Don't get me wrong. Thanksgiving doesn't take away all that other stuff. Remembering the gifts we have in life doesn't take away the fact that some of what life throws at us is really hard to picture as a gift, as our blessing. Being thankful doesn't change the fact that we have to remember not only the good things, but those things which, well, if we had the chance to do it again, we wouldn't. But I believe, to the core of my being, that when we remember and when we see things as blessings, when we remember the gifts we've been given, it allows us a different set of lenses to deal with all the other stuff, the things which aren't blessings, the things which, if we had to do it again, we wouldn't. Because it changes our state of mind. It reminds us that God is there. 
it reminds us that we're not doing it all on ourselves. We're not doing it alone. We are not alone. We live in God's world. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn.